I don't really know what day it is. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I hope wherever you are, you are having a wonderful, safe, healthy, healthy, help. I meant to say happy and healthy, so healthy. I'm a little bit exhausted and that's because my baby sleep schedule is all over the place and there's nothing I can do to try and rep to try and fix it right now. So like, I'm kind of just stuck here. So if I seem out of it, I'm exhausted. It's really hard to do anything nowadays. During the awkward times that he's been sleeping throughout the day, I've been decluttering literally every single thing in my entire life. I've gone through my entire bookshelf, all of my shelves. I even went through my laptop and cleaned that up. I like literally have scrubbed my life clean and have just like gotten rid of so much stuff. I have shown my makeup collection off before in a shop my collection makeup video. I'll link it you know, I'll try and post it here or I'll link it down below. Um, that really shows my entire collection that it once was. I have condensed it down to that one tall tower. Every single thing except for like foundations and face powders is condensed into that one tower. And I'm like real, real impressed with myself. I got rid of so much. But that being said, because I was going through everything, I was reminded of a lot of old favorites that I have. So I thought it'd be really, really fun just to try them out and see if I still really like them. And if I don't, maybe I'll just throw them away. We'll see. Let me tell y'all, the gray hairs are coming back. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it, but I'm 24 and I have horrendous gray hairs. I don't really have a primer that I used to be obsessed with. I'm kind of, I know, I've never really found a primer that I stick with. I did just wash and moisturize my face, so I'm all set with that. But one of my all-time favorite foundations that I really have not used in the longest time is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. If you look at my videos from, let me start to put this on. This is the shade Fair 20N. And this is a brand new bottle too. I found this in like my backups. And I was like, hello, <laughs> where have you been? <sighs> that is super light. Uh oh. Good thing I'm wearing a turtleneck then, huh? Oh my God, did I used to be this freaking pale even in winter right now here's the thing here's the thing let me explain this when I first started getting into makeup I don't know why but I felt like I was well kind of why I don't know I felt like I was always the absolute lightest shade so for a long time I was stuck in that I have to buy light well that now that you think about it the time when I was getting into makeup and like 2016, 2017, foundation ranges sucked. So of course I was the lightest one because it didn't go that light. But as things started to spread out like this, you know, especially after Fenty Beauty first launched with all those shades, you know, people really started to like, people, <laughs> companies really started to upgrade their foundation ranges. So while that was happening, I still was stuck in the, I'm the lightest shade, so I need the lightest shade, but that no longer is true. And I was stuck in that for a long, long time. So I don't know. I guess I bought that, found. I guess I bought this foundation during that time. Although it looks like it matches my neck perfectly. So there's that. So as I'm putting this back on, I do, not hate it there's something in it though that's kind of making my skin itch which i don't know if that's the foundation or just because i haven't worn makeup in so long so my skin was like help also i as i apply these products although they're old favorites i am going to be applying them how i do my makeup today because i really have like most people developed my makeup style from when I originally used all these products. So I'm judging them based off if I like them with my new techniques. 
And so far with this foundation, like I said, the color <laughs> seems like a perfect match. So I guess I should just like shut up about that. I guess maybe I stopped wearing this because it's a winter shade. It is December when I post this. I think it's going to be the 20th. We'll see. So I guess maybe that's why I stopped wearing it is because it very quickly became not my shade. But I don't hate this foundation. It looks like it's medium-ish coverage. I can probably build it up a little bit more if I want to. I think what it is with me in foundation lately is I don't really wear foundation. I don't know. I more so wear this right here. This is the Uoma by Sharon C, the Flawless IRL Skin Perfecting Foundation. This is like a skin tint kind of. I really, really love the formula of this. This, however, feels really like, I think it's because this has the, uh, how do you pronounce it? Hyaluronic, yeah, hyaluronic acid in it. I can feel the slip, which is like kind of weird. It makes things just a tad, I don't know. It takes me a little bit longer to like work in. I also am using this, I found it in my collection. This is the Juno & Co Microfiber Sponge. It is super harder than I remember. I don't know, I remember this being like really soft. I do like the finish that it's giving my foundation. I just feel like I really have to work this foundation in. Whereas with my Uoma, it's kind of like smack it on and go. This I still consistently use. This is the matching Pretty Fresh Concealer. I still use this. <laughs> but again, this one is super light. I'm going to let that sit for a second and let you know that we better prepare for what I'm about to set my face with. This is the Cody Airspun. Can you see how much of this I've left? I've used this so much. I used to use this every day. If you have ever seen this product like fresh, this thing is packed with powder. For me to have this little left, like you can tell that I was obsessed. Oh my god, that's bringing back so many memories. I'm just like flashback to like 2017. Oh my god, I can't even get it out because it's like so barely used up. Oh my god, that's crazy. I used to use this <laughs> every day. I used to think that I had super oily skin and because I worked long days, I thought that I had to really make sure that my makeup wasn't going anywhere. And this Cody Airspun Powder really is like super long lasting and super mattifying, which is good if you have oily skin, but homegirl did not. I had normal leaning, combination but now I'm like dry as <laughs> dry as hell but I did not need to be wearing all this powder I was matte as hell all the time and I'll never forget one time my aunt told me that I looked matte and I was like but I want to look matte and then I looked in the mirror and I looked cakey and matte and I was like oh my god and I never used this powder again except for like ooh, ooh except for like colorful like Halloween looks I'll use it because it's like a whatever big thing of powder that's kind of why I keep it but it also is like old as hell because I got it in like 2016 2017 and I've just held on to it because it's one of those original products that I got when I first started getting into makeup so I couldn't like let it go but I honestly think that it's time before I used to take my beauty blender and really dip it in and then pack it under my eye but we don't need to do that because this is a super strong mattifying powder so what I'm doing is just kind of sticking my brush in and then tapping it off and just tapping my under eye and then sweeping the excess to set the concealer on my lid instead of you know burying my face in it. This is a super good powder though. Man, I was thinking of maybe throwing it away, but I'm being reminded why I've kept it. I feel like I look super pale right now, and I think it's just because this is truly like 
what my winter color is and I just can't accept it. That's what I think the issue is. This product, I feel like I don't even need to explain. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and it is still my number one top favorite bronzer. It's the only product, like pan product like this, that I've ever actually used entirely up and had to buy a second one of. This bronzer, literally the first one I ever bought and the only one that I ever need. It's just so simple and easy to use. It's so easy to build up and blend out. I never have any issues with it. Sometimes I do go a little heavy, but the blend is always <laughs> seamless. And in the end, that's what matters. I used to go so light with bronzer before because I was afraid of like looking orange, but sometimes it would just look like I didn't have any on, which is not, you know, if I looked, imagine that I looked super matte and cakey with almost no bronzer. I probably looked like a ghost all the time. I look back at some pictures and I'm like, they don't look bad. I don't not like my makeup, but I'm like, girl, it could have been so much better if you could actually like see the bronzer on your face. I have three options for blush and I'm like super excited about all three of them. This one from ColourPop came out with the peachy, the peach collection. I used the crap out of this blush. I loved it so much. I can like kind of start to see the beginning of pan. I wore this one like pretty much every day. I loved this peachy blush highlighter. It's not a highlighter, it's just a blush. This is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Blush in the shade Baby Blossom. I love this one. This one's like a baby pink with a sparkle. This one's more like a neutral one because I was so nervous about blush. And again, in like 2016, it wasn't like a big thing. And I also have this one also from L'Oreal, the Paradise Enchanted Scented Blush. It doesn't really smell anymore. Oh, ew. This has a mirror, right? And I remember I used to hold it real close because it's like a nice mirror to hold close to your face and, you know, pluck your eyebrows. And I left some goodies in there. So I feel like because of that, I just have to use this blush because apparently I used it for multiple purposes. This blush is a peachy, oh, it is super dusty. I don't remember it being dusty. This is a peachy blush with a little bit of like a gold shimmer in it. And it is super pretty. Oh man, I remember wearing this blush. This is when I started getting a little more like brave. Although I was, oh, it's intense. Oh man, maybe, did I add too much? Ah. Okay, this blush is super pigmented, but oof. I don't know if I actually really like this blush. I think maybe we might retire her. I do remember really loving it at one point in time, but this is a little boring, I hate to say. I don't know, I just, I have better blushes, I guess is what I mean. So I think I am going to get rid of this one. Although it was fun to like use it again, you know, memory lane, but I don't really care for like a gold reflect blush as much as this one. I mean, it is pretty. It's a pretty blush. It's just, I don't know. I gotta get rid of it. I don't ever use it. This was fun. We're moving on. We're breaking up. Okay, before I add on highlighter, I'm going in with MAC Fix Plus. There was a time, uno momento. There was a time where MAC Fix Plus ruled the world and you can't tell me otherwise. Moving on to highlight, this is hilarious. This is the Becca, what are these called? Do they have a fancy name? Yes, these are the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed Highlighter in Moonstone. I use the crop out of this highlighter. It's in this itty bitty size because when I first started getting into makeup, I obviously didn't have that much money to be spending on like bougie products. As you can tell, most of this stuff so far has been like affordable. We do have a little more expensive stuff like the Mac, obviously, but 
this is so little because I bought the little size because I didn't have that much money but like obviously it was enough because here I am all these years later still using it This is a super beautiful highlighter. Oh my God, I remember this now. I remember you. I did use, obviously, I used this one a lot. I just remember it being really pretty to begin with. And then there was a time in 2016 where everybody was doing like crazy, blinding, next level highlighters, which highlights like metallics all over their face. And I'm still here for that. I still love that, but I feel like I can reappreciate this guy and I'm glad that I kept it because it is super subtle but it's super beautiful. This is a good one. Moving on to brows and this is hilarious that I'm going to be using this. I didn't even know I still had one of these. I thought I had already gotten all rid of them. This is the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow, brow Pomade in Black Brown. I used to use this all the freaking time. I was definitely part of that terrible Instagram. Oh my God, this is like dried up, which I mean, that might be good because that'll keep it less intense. I definitely was one of those people that got caught in the Instagram baddie brow that like overdid with the block brow and everybody's, you know, cartoon pomade brows. I was one of those people. Yep, I totally am. But now I'm definitely more along the lines of subtle brown makeup. I already have pretty good brow hairs. They just need like a little help being filled in and I don't need to go as heavy, not even just with the pomade, but pretty much brow products in general. I like it. I'm gonna start using this again. Wow, that was like super easy. My brows look really good. Okay, I'm just gonna go over the lip really quick. I feel like I need to do that. This I definitely probably need to get rid of. I don't even know how old this is, but this was my favorite. I went through three tubes of these. This is the Tarte Something Under the Sea Lipstick in Rum Punch. First off, the packaging, beautiful, I love it. And this nude, look, I went pretty in on this and then I lost it in a purse and never used it again until I was going through everything. But I used to use this all the freaking time. I just love the tone of it. It's like a creamy satin. Ugh. It doesn't smell like a crayon. Oh, I don't know. Let me let me show you this other one because I loved this one too. This is the Milk Makeup Lipstick in Cream. This one's definitely like pinkier and a little matter. Oh, I love both of those. What should I go with? I feel like I'm going to go with the rum punch one because it's been so long and I really did love this one. It's probably expired and I probably shouldn't be doing this, but there we go. Moving on to eyeshadow, I have a couple options. This is the Urban Decay Naked 3 palette. This was the, oh my god, look at how like dinged up this packaging is. Yikes. I used this palette non-stop. This was the first like, I don't know what they're called, like premiere palettes, you know, like fancy expensive palettes I ever got. And because it's so like beautiful and rose gold, I freaking love it. And I used it all the time and I just can't get rid of it because it's just like a special memory. I was a freshman in college and just starting to get into makeup and this was like my first big palette. A lot of people's is the like, you know, original naked, but this one was mine and I will forever hold on to this because it's such a good memory. An ex-boyfriend bought it for me, but um, I can look past that. I think for old time's sakes, I'm going into the Naked 3 palette. I'm going to try and see if I can do like something that I used to do you know, when I use this palette, I guess. I'm gonna go into Strange first. That's like the light cream shade and I have like dug into that guy. And just kinda set a base with it. That's what I used to do with this is just kinda work it over. That's why there's like such a deep <laughs> mark in it. I don't really do this anymore. I'm doing it now. I know I said I was gonna do like new things. I know what I said. This look is going to be kind of something that I used to do just with better technique. 
Then I'm going into this light matte mauve called Limit with that same brush. I used to change all my brushes for each color. That's a waste of time. Don't do that. It just makes a lot of brushes that you have to wash. Ridiculous. Oh man, I think this is like the last time I will ever use this palette. I think it's just gonna go like in the nostalgia drawer at this point. This palette has like no pigment left to it. Remember these naked palettes? Everybody lost their mind and thought these naked palettes were like the best thing ever. And it's like <sighs> early 2016, am I right? I don't even know if you can see anything. I just really had to build this up. I'm going to go next into Nooner. This one I can see I dug into because it's like the next deepest color. I was really big on like building up the color of my mattes into like the lightest, next lightest, next one. Ne like, you know, I was really meticulous about that. I think that's my Virgo moon talking. Okay, that Nooner shade actually had some pretty good pigment in it. So, you know, thank God for that. That one definitely, you know, helped save the day. These are a little bit harder than I remember to blend. That could be, you know, due to the fact that this is a hundred years old, possibly. I think this is probably as far as I would take it, just really probably build up the outer corner and then slap a shiny color on. I use dust all the time. Totally. I can see that here, but I want to take it a little bit deeper go into dark side. I definitely was more afraid of darker colors when I was first starting out. This eye look is coming out to be incredibly smoky, but I'm kind of here for it. And I feel like that also speaks to the time, except for me, because I was too nervous to do it. My biggest thing when I first started wearing makeup, and I'm kind of annoyed at myself for thinking this, but I was so worried about the way that I looked when I wore makeup that I was so like, careful about the colors that I picked and how I wore it because one time when I was in high school and you know a girl that I was like acquaintances with she came to school with a full face of makeup on and I thought she looked really pretty but she did have a clear like demarcation line but I overheard a group of like nasty preteen hormonal boys say something mean about it and it was really it was really mean and I was always worried that if I did my makeup and came to school, like, they would say it about me. So I was always afraid to. So I didn't really wear much makeup in high school for that reason. I used to wear eyeliner and then the eyeliner would always, like, bleed under my eye. So I looked like a raccoon. So that wasn't much better. But I don't know. But it followed me through college when I first started doing makeup. I felt like it had to be really pretty. It couldn't be a certain way. It had to look, you know nice so people wouldn't make fun of me and I it took me a while to like break out of it but I'm glad that I did now I am gonna go with my finger into buzz this is definitely not something I used to do I only recently started doing it but I'm doing it this buzz looks like it's really sparkly in the pan but I don't really see much happening well, I mean, kind of. Oh, lots of fallout. Oh, God. Whoo. Wow. I don't know. I don't really see much going on with this buzz shade. And again, this palette is old as dirt. So, like, don't take this as a good review. I do remember this being, like, my absolute favorite palette. I used it every single day. a little bit better maybe it just needed to be like warmed up it still is like lackluster compared to like 2021 <laughs> eyeshadow palettes I'm gonna go into dust now I am gonna take like a smaller actually I'm gonna wet it because I used to do that a lot too I probably still should but you know life I am gonna go into dust now this is the lightest shimmer shade in the palette and I'm gonna build that up, hopefully, maybe. That's like super dusty. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. It still is very much like a 
early 2016 light shimmer, but it is super pretty right here. There is so much fallout on my face from that palette. Should I do a wing liner? I used to always do a liner. Should we go? Should we do it? Just comb my lashes. I don't know. This one looks really good. That other one doesn't, but you know, it's not fine. I refound this primer that I love so much. I can't believe I like ever stopped using it. This, let me clarify though. This is a primer that is brand new. I threw the other one away because that would have given you an eye, me an eye infection. Don't mess around with these products. I've gotten an eye infection from an old mascara before. This is a new one. I bought a new one just for this video because I remembered it and I loved it so much. So this is the first time that I'm using it since I bought it and I'm honestly so excited and it's the reason why I'm even filming this video in the first place. So it's a primer, just like you would prime your face before you put on your makeup. This helps volume and length and hopefully it's as good as I remember. Next is another mascara that I'm super excited about. Again, brand new. This is the Essence Volume Stylist Last Extension Mascara. So not only is the primer going to help with volume and length, but this mascara will too. And I remember really, really loving this and it's super formu formable, affordable, affordable, affordable. <gasps> no, this mascara is drier than I remember. I like the wetter <laughs> formula. I remember liking this mascara more. I don't think it's for me anymore. I also feel like because the mascara is throwing me off so much, that primer, I can't appreciate it like I know I can. So I want to keep the primer, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm done with this mascara. It's very dry and I just don't like formulas like that anymore, I guess. Yeah, it's just okay. I don't know. I really want to keep this around. I know that I love this. I know that with the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, it works really well. I think it's just the dryness of this formula, but I'm keeping this. I am probably getting rid of this, even though I just bought it, but I don't know. It was only a couple bucks, which sounds really capitalistic of me, but no way. <sighs> okay, that's another reason right there that I'm throwing that mascara away. It's like not scratching off and it's not even like smudging it just looks like it's like stuck to maybe the powder that I put down the eyeshadow but that sucks now I'm gonna have to take a very pointed Instagram photo if I even take one at all probably not because now I'm upset okay everybody this is the final look with all of my old favorites I don't hate it. It's definitely an early 2016 look, especially with the eyeshadow. Of course, it's just because the eyeshadow palette, duh, but I don't hate it. I just think that my makeup taste has definitely evolved for the better. I think what I'm definitely keeping out of this pile is the palette for nostalgia reasons, that butter bronzer, because I use it literally every freaking day. Um... The Becca highlighter was super, super awesome. I totally forgot about that. It's definitely a highlighter that fits my highlighter wants nowadays. So I think I'm gonna like re-fall in love with that product. And I'm honestly kind of super excited for it. I love how it looks right now. And it's definitely reminding me of my early 2016 beginning makeup. That is gonna conclude today's video. I hope that wherever you are, you are having a good day and you get a good night's rest. And I will check you in my next video. Bye. During the awkward times that he's been this video, um, I'm gonna put ow. Is this filming? I hope it's filming. I've been Lucy, do not come over here and start growling. Smokey, get away. Go. I remember why I loved it so much. Ooh. I just really don't want to put that on my mouth right now. Oh, I love this. This is the essence. Uh,
I don't know why. I know why I stopped, but I'm gonna get back into it. 